Coming up tonight on Murrow News 8, the man suspected of threatening a Missouri University has been arrested. Plus, the weather outside is frightful, but not for Mount Hood. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Kaylinda Kendall. And I'm Evan Barron. Thanks for joining us tonight. Police are investigating 19-year-old Hunter Park on suspicion of making a terrorist threat. Officers say Hunter Park admitted the threat he posted on Yik Yak to shoot any black people he saw were, quote, inappropriate. His arrest comes amid tensions of attentions at the University of Missouri Columbia campus. Student protests forced university's president Tim Wolf to resign earlier this week. Today, the university system appointed a new interim president, Michael Middleton. Park does not attend UM Columbia. In the state of Washington, the number of people who overdose on heroin has gone up for the fifth year in a row. According to the data from the University of Washington's Alcohol and Drug Institute, more than 15,000 people checked into a rehab. Also, more than 200 people died of a heroin overdose. Later on our show, our reporter Jeremy Seargard will be sitting down with, the, with one of WSU's police officers to see what we should do if faced with threats of violence on campus. In Virginia, the family of Linwood Lambert, who died in police custody back in 2013, files a $25 million lawsuit against police. They are accusing the officers of using excessive force and violating Lambert's civil rights. Police video shows officers using tasers on Lambert. The police tased him 21 times by the time the police arrived at Lambert Station. Lambert was unresponsive. An autopsy report attributes his death to acute cocaine intoxication. Also on the east side of the country, a plane slammed into an apartment building. One witness says the plane just seemed to just drop out of the sky. The left wing hit the ground first and left a witness mark. Then the aircraft hit half of an apartment building, destroying it before running up an embankment behind the building and coming to rest. Yesterday, a drone hit Seattle's Great Wheel, shutting it down briefly. The incident happened just after 4 p.m. when workers heard a loud thud. Employees say they saw the drone crash onto a plastic table on an outdoor patio area. No one was hit by the, the drone and police are still looking for the drone's owner. And early in the show, we discussed the Missouri threats and heroin use in the state of Washington. Murrow News 8's Jeremy Siergar is in our newsroom with more. Jeremy? Thank you, Kalinda. Here with me is WSU Assistant Chief of Police Steve Hansen. Uh, here to discuss with us the steps we would take if we are ever faced with, with a situation like in Missouri. Officer Hansen, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for asking me. All right, let's get right into it. So I'm sure you've heard of what happened in the University of Missouri. Um, recently, they faced online threats. Uh, these people were saying that they were going to shoot some people. Um, like my question to you is what course of actions will WSU police take if they are ever faced with this kind of threat? You'll see our actions similar to exactly what Missouri did to where they tracked down the uh, folks on Yik Yak using uh, the computer technology and stuff, using the cell towers to track them down. You'll find in situations like this that whether it's Yik Yak or some of the other social media sites, they're more than willing to assist in law enforcement. Uh, we would put the same emergency notification out warning folks and letting them make a decision on whether or not they wanted to, you know, go to class or something the next day. Right, and I like on that, uh, you touched a little bit on students um, going to class, uh, but if there are online threats, like what are your advice and suggestions to them basically? Immediately report them to us and we'll do our best to run them down. Um, we'll sit there and evaluate them to make sure they're credible and if they're credible threats or verifiable threats, then we'll take similar steps as they did in Missouri to sit there and uh, do our best to ensure the safety of the students, staff, and faculty here. All right, and would you suggest them that uh, like if you do find this, like if the threats are true, mm -hmm. um, if, if it was in any way credible, would you suggest them to just kind of like uh, wait in their homes or like stay in classes or just uh, what steps should they take to protect themselves from? In situations like that, we'd probably uh, work with the administration here and mm -hmm. see how they would handle classes and stuff. If they made the decision 
to let you suspend classes for that day. We'd probably recommend that everybody stay inside. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah, let's move on to a little uh, another topic. We also touched a little bit on uh, this a little bit earlier with Kalinda and Evan. According to the University of Washington, there has been an increase of in the use of heroin. Now, do you think uh, we also have an increase here in Pullman? I would say yes, we have. We've seen an increase in the uh, the recent past. Uh, we've had marijuana here quite a bit and stuff. We've seen the use of heroin and stuff. And I think part of that is it's been um, glamorized more with folks pr prominent in the uh, media using it. It's no longer, I don't think, the drug of those folks that was associated with, let's say, people in uh, the back alleys and stuff. All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much, Officer Hansen, for coming here, uh, joining us tonight. We appreciate that. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Evan and Kalinda, back to you guys. Thanks so much, Officer Hansen and Jeremy. That was really informative. Yeah, I learned a lot. I mean, it's pretty cool. It seems like the students are very uh, well aware of anything of disaster were to Don't worry, 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Skiers and snowboarders have reason to celebrate. Snowmobiles and ski lifts at Oregon's Mount Hood are ready after Mountain got its first snow of the season. Yesterday, day when more snow run arrived, Wednesday's flakes aren't expected to stick around. When it's good, it's good. And, and when it's hard, it's hard. You, when you're dealing with Mother Nature, you never know what you're going to get. But that's part of the excitement, too. You, you know, every year. Well, Clint and already know the snow is already here in the state of Washington. Uh, yesterday in Stevens Pass, uh, experienced up to eight inches of snow since Tuesday. The pass has already experienced a few inches, and with windy conditions present, expect difficult drivers driving conditions before sunrise. The prompting state troopers sent out a reminder to drivers to be prepared for the winter condition. T traction tires are also advised. More snow is expected tomorrow and this weekend. And we have our weather lady, Wen, joining us at the desk. So, Wen, what's the weather looking like this week? Thanks, Kevin. Uh, thanks, Evan. For today, as we can see, we have a pretty chilly evening. The temperature is 40 degrees, but today's high was 44, so it's no big deal. As we move into tomorrow, the temperature is higher than today, but there might be a little bit of rain during the, mon during the morning and afternoon. And the evening will be just like today. Let's take a look at the state map. We are looking at the raining west side, and the temperature is around 50. For the east side, Mostly cloudy for Pullman, Spokane, and Yakima, and a little bit of rain in Venachi. And here's my five-day forecast. Saturday will be just like today, but a little bit warmer. Starting Sunday, the lower temperature will get down to high 20s, but there might be a rain and snow next Monday and Tuesday. Remember to take out your coat from the closet and stay warm. That's all the weather I have for you tonight. Coming up after the break, Kevin Fisher channels his inner Rex Ryan. Stay with us. <sighs> the great outside. My new mom and I have a lot in common. They're shiny. We both love the outdoors. That's not a flower. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Never. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised.
practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Kevin, we want to know what WSU team is headed to the dance. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's official. The WSU women's soccer team is going dancing. On Tuesday, the Cougars got the call they were waiting for from the NCAA committee this, inviting them to the postseason. The Cougs finished the regular season in third place in the Pac-12 and will host Northwestern in the opening round of the tournament this Saturday at 5 p.m. Basketball junkies expect to be in paradise Friday night at Beasley Coliseum. Not one, but two WSU basketball games will take place on Friel Court tomorrow evening. The Cougars men basketball team takes things off with a matchup against Northern Arizona at 5.30 p.m., followed by the WSU women's basketball team, which takes on UC Santa Barbara at 8.30 p.m. Tomorrow is the regular season tip-off for both the men and women. Halftime of the Thursday night football has the Bills leading the Jets 12-3. Coach Ryan, wrong helmet, buddy. We got a redshirt sophomore quarterback who should be a Heisman candidate. We've lost our three games by a combined 15 points. Most importantly, we're going bowling again. Watch out, world. The Cougs are back. UCLA, heads up, you're next. I'm calling it 42-38, WSU prevails. You heard it here first. After the break, WSU students rake in the awards. Can't get any better than that. Stick with us. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> Find yours at discovertheforest.org. <sighs> the great outside. My new mom and I have a lot in common. They're shiny! We both love the outdoors. That's not a flower. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play. Or even what you wear. You just need to be there. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. Yesterday, in the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, we took time to honor those who serve in the military, as well as remember those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. On campus, WSU's ROTC's Color Guard marched to the sound of the Border Highlanders' drums and pipes today to tribute those who have served our country. Beyond the battle scars and wounds, those serving our country often bring deeper wounds unseen. Tomorrow, Washington State will recognize medical wear MANA as an alternative to prescription pills to treat PTSD for veterans. Washington is the 11th state to add PTSD as a qualifying condition for medical marijuana. It's a big KO for the competition, Cable 8's video game news and review. The APIT has been named the country's best video general entertainment program. And in the Boyd Boylan College of Engineering, senior Omar Ruiz brews up some recognition. Ruiz placed second in an international competition by developing a piston coffee mug. He, he 3D printed a model, then created a new computer program to cut the mug out of an aluminum piston and rod. And on Saturday, the 24-hour hackathon at 9 a.m. in Salone, room 175, the winners will be determined by a panel from Diligent. The, and that's all the great news we have for you tonight. And Thanks sure, for joining us. And make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> really.